I'm Stephen Edholm from the Turkey Song Experimental Homestead blog, and I'm here to introduce you to Frankentree. This is an apple tree with over 140 different varieties of apples grafted onto it. When I first moved here, I saw this tree growing, and it was just a rootstock sucker. It had been an Arkansas black tree, and you know, probably the deer wasn't cared for very well. The deer probably busted off the graft, and a sucker grew up that made these hard, sour green apples but the tree is very vigorous and healthy like it is now with no water whatsoever, which it still doesn't get, or fertilizer. So I was stoked. I was like, okay, this is a, this is a great opportunity. I can take this framework and I can add stuff to it and test out new varieties. When you add a graft to a tree like this, especially if you use a long, a long piece of wood to add on, which is called a scion, you can get fruit often in the second or third year. I added maybe 25 or 30 the first year, and then maybe an average of that every year for a while. When I started this project, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I figured there were probably you know hundreds of varieties of apples, not thousands. It turns out there are probably tens of thousands. So I've slowed down quite a bit on collecting varieties now. Um, I get a, a good handful of stuff every year, but I have other Franken trees going too. So I'll add a couple of things to this year, but I'm also cutting stuff off that I don't like. Um, that's kind of the whole point is to test stuff, so I'm not just trying to collect as, as many varieties as I can. If I really tweaked it, I could probably get a couple hundred on a tree this size, um, but that's not really my goal. Uh, for instance, this variety right here, my jewel, um, it's a great apple if you like bananas, <laughs> but I don't like bananas and it tastes like bananas. Pretty strong too, like strong, almost like artificial banana flavor. So I might just cut that off and graft something else on, or I might leave it just because it's novel and you know people that like bananas can come here and eat it. Or I could sell it at the farmer's market or whatever. But most of the apples on here won't, won't make the grade and they'll get cut off. Um, I'm sure at least 50% of them, probably more. And then I don't know if I'll just keep adding new stuff or you know graft on stuff that I know I like and just make it a tree that produces a bunch of great apples over a long season. The season right now runs from about the middle of July, which would be an apple called red astrakhan, which is a terrible apple. Supposedly it makes great applesauce, but I haven't tried that. But it's a terrible eating apple. And then the last one always ripens about February 1st, and that's Lady Williams, and it's an excellent apple. Pollination on the tree is excellent because the bees are just constantly hopping from one variety to the next, and that means that, you know, even in a bad year, the tree produces, is more likely to produce fruit than any of the other apple trees. So that's a really excellent um, reason to do multi-grafted trees like this. The variety is another reason. Um, you know, there are just so many different flavors and styles of apples on, out there. And so it's like just through, constantly through the season, you're getting to taste all these different flavors and textures which is just super fun. This section of the tree right up in here is Catherine Etter, which is an excellent late apple. And the, the tree is just, it's just a super vigorous variety. And then other varieties will just be kind of wimpy and they'll sit there and they'll grow a few twigs and make some apples and not really want to go anywhere. So it takes a little bit of a pruning balancing act to uh, balance all of that. And I used to kind of worry about that, but it hasn't turned out to be that big of a deal. So uh, don't, you know, it shouldn't be a deterrent for anybody that wants to try this. So basically, this tree's awesome. It's really fun. Uh, it's fun to bring people here and show it to them. Uh, it inspires people. I've gotten to test all these great varieties. And I'd really like to see multi-grafted trees like this become kind of the norm for, you know, small scale kind of homesteaders and homeowners because I think people would be served much better by the diversity, the long season, the quality when you get to you know test these things out and find out what you really like and what does well in your area. And um, also the better pollination. So you know there's there's multiple great reasons to have a tree like this. And it's not, I wouldn't really even consider it work. It's like a fun hobby to me. I trade scions on the internet and go to scion exchanges and collect this stuff and just add a few things every year and it's fun. So uh, I would encourage you to, if you have an apple tree, a pear tree, a plum tree, or a cherry, 
Those are the easiest to learn to graft on, especially apples and pears. They're very forgiving. Hopefully at some point I'll make a detailed video on frankentreeing with lots of information on how to retain the branch structure and the different types of grafts. But for now, if you can just get a sharp knife and some rubber bands to wrap the grafts with, um, you know, just make grafts into small wood just as an experiment to see if they take. And if they take, then you'll gain confidence and you can keep going. Places to look for scions, a lot of large uh, population areas now have scion exchanges where you can uh, bring your fruitwood cuttings and there's just usually big tables of fruitwood cuttings and you can collect them and take them home and graft them. And there's also um, my friends Little John and Andy Russell started the North American Scion Exchange online, which is an online group where you can trade scions. So that's really cool too. Um, just do it. It's not that hard. What do you have to lose by trying? Just do it. Franken trees. Franken trees forever. In a world of boring apples, in a time of uniformity, one tree dared to be different. From the producers of Guinea Pig Munch Off comes a film that will make you rethink what a tree can be. Get ready to laugh. Get ready to cry. Get ready to graft. Rankin Tree.